I think Celsius is just making me normal, where it used to give me a jolt. So, you guys me. are cracked out on that shit. YouTube, we got a big one for you today. We got a couple of cool gifts, ton of watches, so stay tuned. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Instagram, welcome. Are you TikTok? dancing? TikTok, because you know, I like to, you can't I like, see under I like to move around. He's like this. He's I like this. Like <laughs> Benoit Gadois. Ben is the CEO and president of a company called Insta Products that has five or six other different companies underneath it, things like Instapot. Well, they came out with a new coffee line and everybody in the office got a coffee machine. So this is compostable espresso capsule, which is actually cool because all these capsules that you get with like Nespresso and all that, you have to like send them back and they recycle them. These can go into compost, which means they will decompose. Coffee pods. We got, the, we got the point. Strong guy. Uh, sir, you might hold on to my sword. All right, look at this thing. Ben, thank you so much. You and guys. just so you know, we got like five of these. You know, Mark Gebauer. Hey team, new snack delivery. Time is not refundable. Yo, that's yourself. Look at that. Uh, Kyle, that, this is not your size, I apologize. Size, Nobody no, touched Mark. nothing. Red. Oh, it's a watch. This was a, this was a collab that he did with a company named Hoffman from what I understand. Look at that. So this is Hoffman by Gebauer. So that's the box for the watch. Cracking the raspberry cream. twins. And of course the classic truffle, truffle cashew. cashew. This is, feel this. Yeah, yeah, no. Feel that. You can tell from yeah, the quality. Mark, thank you so much once again. You didn't have to, but I'm kind of glad you did, so. I think that was a pretty weak shipment. He should up his game next time. Yeah, I know, that was so weak. You only sound like a hundred things. Come on now, Mark. Back to what we do. Now, you guys remember the Conjar stuff. This is a 36 millimeter white gold Prezi on a strap. You gotta see the dial on that thing. The idea is on a strap, you can probably count on one hand, basically. There's not a whole lot of them out there. But this one is not like any other one, yeah, because if you look in the back of the watch, this is that's the money shot, right? You have the Conjar logo. Fully stated. Lasered in the back of the watch. Now, when we go backwards, and you look at some of the older Conjar stuff, the Conjar was always on a dial. They stopped doing that quite a while ago, but going forward, the Sultan of Oman still wanted to differentiate his stuff from everybody else's, so they had the Conjar logo engraved in the back. Here's another one, two-tone Yachtmaster, same logo in the back. Uh, in general, this watch, trading-wise, like where's the where's the trading at? Brand Around fifteen thousand. Uh, with a Conjar logo, rule of thumb, you're probably doubling the price on pretty much anything that you're looking at because because they're that rare, and again, they're not going to be doing this anymore. So. There's going to be less and less of them out there. Collectors that are, I have a, quite a few put away in my own safe. Collectors are out there are definitely putting them away because it's just that rare. That, from Rolex that makes millions of watches that has a logo, be it on the dial, be it on the back. The black OP never really took off even during the crazy it craze, did. right? I mean, sure but not like it wasn't 2X or 3X or anything. What was the trading at? It was 2X, so considering the retail price. Did it get price, to 2X? Yeah, considering the retail prices in the fives, right? Um, a black probably peaked at around 10,000 because a black, black yeah. dial, I mean, you could... You, black, white. It's hard to differentiate between that and a Datejust, right? That's why the more unique exotic dials like yellow, red, Tiffany, obviously. What's the fate of these now? Like the, just so yeah, still, it, They're still very strong. People still highly prefer them to Datejust. Is it because they're still within quote unquote that affordable realm around that 10 grand mark? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess I guess anything that they have way more up. character than a day job. Now this is probably one of the prettiest dials that yeah. Rolex made. This was last year, no? Last year, which is the leaf dial. The palm dial. Palm. What is it? Palm. Palm. Yes. Which is the palm dial? <laughs> diamond bezel, diamond dial. What's the price range on a piece like this today? So something like that palm dial with the with the diamond bezel is going to be north of twenty thousand dollars if you need to order. It's like seventeen five list. So out the door, you know, you're paying damn near eighteen five. Uh, again, th thirty six millimeter Datejust, especially with diamond bezels, it's one of those things that a lot of people try to compare with AP, yet they can't because it's like half the price. Yet Datejust thirty six, especially for ladies, they make better dials than AP. If they, you take they, a thirty seven millimeter Royal Oak, ladies, there's nothing to write home about. Yeah, you got blue, green. I mean, blue, gray, white, black. Here you have palms. You have. Uh, uh, motifs, you have all types of sun dust when it comes to the ladies line. So they, they make a lot a lot more pretty dials. They give a lot better options to ladies if you even look at the colorful OPs, right? If you look at some of the other day just, if you look at some of the presidents and things yeah. of that nature, there's just so many variations where if you take a ladies royal look, you basically have yeah. your metals, yellow gold, rose gold, and then the dials are just basically white, black. Yeah, blue. I mean, you can go just, on the Rolex website and just literally scroll through each dial and you'll be there for like minutes. Yeah, exactly. So this is a 16523 Zenith Daytona two-tone. And I, you know, this actually this specific dial right here, I'm really happy that Rolex went back to these subs, 
right, with with the gold outlines because I think it's such a more. It made the watch pop. It pops way more, and actually in the Zenith configuration, it's actually super super rare to see. You don't see a lot of these dials one six five two three. So what's yeah. a, what's the market price on something like this? Listen, you, it's a watch that can be had under nineteen thousand dollars. You have to understand that because they're so old and. The price is all based on the condition. Like this one for, for where there's really not that much flex in the band. It's really crisp, clean unit. So you can get a lot more money for something like this. An older Rolex. And what this is, is a watch that's seemingly not all that popular. 16013, five digit day just. It's not an OS. No, no, it's, it's, not, it's not, like, it's not yeah. like the president that we had, but for its age, this is in great condition. And what I love most about this is again, when I say time capsule, original box tag everything else under the sun uh and this is a seven million series which don't quote me what year that puts it in but i'm sure we can Probably. look it up when i get stuff like this when i have an opportunity to buy stuff like this people always ask me is there anything you want to buy and put away this is the kind of stuff that i buy and put away so there's your answer what do you got adrian all right back to the classic and me marco and roman just did a video on the daytona and will the ceramic be a collectible in the future and in my opinion i think it absolutely will be just as any Daytona that has ever been produced is a collectible thing. Ceramic, I th to me, aesthetically, this is the prettiest watch. I still like the older one. No. What? I like the older black belt. Older black belt over, there, over yeah. a panda? Man. Yeah. I mean, it's bugging. to each his own. You know bugging. I mean? this thing, maybe, it's, maybe I'm being nostalgic. This but thing is just... People ask me about, oh, they're, but they're going to make millions of them. Absolutely. Daytona has always been the number one selling watch in the world, period. It's a watch that's consistently always sold over its retail price at the time where other Rolexes was, you could buy it 30 off, right? Anyway, here we have a blue OP124200 reference. So this is a 34 millimeter. I'm actually really glad that Rolex did this, this size because this is like the perfect balance between 36 being too big on ladies with small wrists and 30 one just being ridiculously small or 28 <laughs> or 28 obviously they did away with that many years ago but the uh or no 26 they went away 26 from but here's here's a 34 millimeter it is a price point watch under ten thousand dollars so pretty blue dial the automart Gay royal oak offshore ceramic bezel rose gold and I believe so these, these have been pretty steady. Yeah, this, it, it, Both the older and the newer models. I'm really happy they did what they did with that dial. That This is the facelift from the 26401RO with the, or otherwise known as the Panda. But then it, when they made it all black, they made it very stealth-like and it's just a much prettier dial. But they're also, the way they highlighted the, yeah, yeah. the sub-dials, the way they highlighted uh, the dial, the markers and everything else about it, it just, it just kind of works together. Yeah, if, they, um, if they make a configuration like that, maybe in their new upcoming releases, although they didn't do it this time around, in a 42 millimeter case or a 43 millimeter case. So our, our friend and client uh, yesterday sent us an interesting fact that you can now take older offshores and convert them into the interchangeable Correct. straps, right? So, so the, we, you guys know the new APs that have the interchangeable strap, the easy change straps where you yep. just, you know, you, they pop off. It's, by a, kit, it's a kit conversion. Now, now you, you can, can have a, you can buy a conversion kit from AP that would allow you to do That's the same. That's a freaking game changer. Dude. It's a big game changer. Game changer. That's a big game changer because some of the newer straps they've come out with, it's going to give an uplift to the older offshores beyond. My favorite 41 millimeter day just. So the 41 millimeter day just with the charcoal gray diamond dial. For something that has the look of a president with the fluted bezel, right? I mean, from afar, you could think that it's a president because of its size, especially this came out around the time the 41 millimeter prezies came out. The fluted bezel, the, 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 I mean, just everything about this watch aesthetically really is in the dial and at a price point of what now? A watch like that in, in this condition is around $13,000. Yeah, I, I bought dial. my, I paid for my wife, so I'm going to say six. The How bottom. about a tech wear? Look at this chronograph. Tell me that's not a beautiful chronograph. And again, people always look for price point watches and they settle for something that, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll tend to go for the Rolex and settle for something that's pretty old because they want to spend around the $5,000 price mark. Guys, open the blinders. Look at everything about this watch. Look at the red accents around, right? You see the red accents around the case? I mean, the chrono buttons, the dial, the design, the strap, everything about this watch. It's just, it's just a beautiful chronograph. Matches your shirt too. Yeah. Anyway, you know what? I should probably wear it. So as Roman was talking about the Tag Heuer, I unboxed this Bulgari, the ceramic Octofinismo skeleton. And every single time I get this watch, I'm in awe of it. And it just happens to be, it's actually sized for my wrist. So, I mean, Look how thin that case profile is. It's ridiculous. You can almost forget you're wearing this watch if you, if you don't pay But yeah, attention. look how large it still wears. It's unbelievable. It is, it is such a freaking cool watch. I mean, like, if you, if you look at the aesthetics behind it, you look at the engineering, you look at the finish behind it, it is, and it can be had for under $22,000. It's and, crazy. And it's, it's big. Razor thin and black. I love it. You know, whenever I open up a Moser box, the it. first thing I'm going to talk it. about is I'm going to talk about dial. Because Moser and their dials, they just... We have a sick incoming Moser. 
people always ask me, you know, what's a good entry point into the world of independence? And I always say Moser because Mosers are still affordable. They haven't gone 3x, 3x, and 5x retail value some of the other independents, right? And again, you get the quality independent watchmaking. With Moser, you get their signature dials that come in variation of colors. I can't wait to see the one that you ordered. It's sort of, it's like that, cool. go, that ghost. I don't, know, I, don't, cool. I don't know what the nickname of that Blue dial fume, is. Fume something or other? Fume? I didn't even, honestly, we've never had that watch before. I just, I, know, I, can't, I, I, just, I, can't I looked at it. it and I'm like, all right, that looks like that price of a watch. I'll buy it. You guys stand by for the unboxing. That's incoming. Uh, Vacheron. Has Vacheron slowed down or the prices just came out and they're still selling? Because I see you keep buying them. Look, again, it's, we, we, buy things, we buy things as they come if it makes sense and we can fill our clients' wants and needs at, at reasonable deals today. So a watch like this, like this 5500V in black, I just felt like it was the right price to purchase because we can offer it now to our clients at not a huge premium over MSRP. So I think that is the key here. That's, that, this is the only reason why I bought that watch because we can sell it now at a fair value. When this watch was you know, upwards of 50000 I, I I personally thought it was a little high. I mean, now it's now it's under thirty thousand. I think it's very. I say one of the one of the things one of the things that we do, you know, as the market starts to shift, and whether it shift upwards or downwards, Royal Oak Perpetual Calendar, and not not even necessarily this one, but this is this is the new dial, the facelift, the two six five seven four ST dot zero three. You'll see the darker sub dials in the dial. The Royal Oak Perpetual, in my opinion, and I think this is universally probably accepted as the same opinion, is the prettiest. Aesthetic dial, period. For Perpe perpetuals. I'm talking about for perpetual. For per perpetual. Regardless of the brand. Regardless of the brand. I agree. The Royal Oak Perpetual is the prettiest dial. Well, first of all, this baby blue dial is absolutely amazing. Let's start there. The fact that it sort of went two-tone blue on the dial made the watch a lot more eligible than its predecessor from a couple of years ago. Yeah. It's just, there's something about that baby blue that just works like, you know what I would love to see this on? I would love to see this. Well, you can put it on a strap. I know. I would love to see this on a, ba a matching baby blue strap, such as this. Put it on, you can put it on and, any strap you like. And also, what, one of the things I like about the Vacheron rubber straps, it's like textures. It's got, you know, it's not just like a plain Jane strap. So, wrist check did the perpetual, so it came with a strap and a bracelet. The China one. The China one. I would love to see this come with a strap this way because well, I think listen, this on can, a baby strap would be fine. You, you can throw a 41 strap on there. Apparently we have another conjure that I forgot to show you guys. This is what, you know, my DMs are going to blow up because this is one of the more popular models and it's the Batgirl. So this is a Batgirl conjure in the back. As you know, every single day is never a dull moment here. We'll see you on the next unboxing. YouTube, thank you. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Instagram, thank you so much for